Hello everyone and welcome again. So continuing our discussion about the orthopedics, trauma, basic appearance levels class. Here we will talk about the pathological fractures. So those fractures occur when there is a pathology in the affected bone. And this is different from the fractures we talked about before. All the fractures we talked about before, the bone was normal and here the bone is has pathology in it that precipitate the fracture to occur so here we will talk about the definition the causes the history examination imaging and treatment of pathological fractures so let's start so let's start with the definition so pathological fractures result from normal force acting on abnormal bone which is a weak bone and most commonly caused by osteoporosis but also may be due to tumors infection or inherited bone disorders so let's clarify some terms that are used for the pathological fractures so the term pathological fractures previously used for tumors that cause fractures only but nowadays it also used to, descri to describe fractures caused by metabolic bone disease and osteomyelitis. So it is more of a general term nowadays. It's used for every pathology that causes a fracture uh, in a bone. The term insufficiency fracture means a fracture caused by repetitive trauma on the osteoporotic bone. And the term fragility fracture is the fracture that caused by minimal trauma on the osteoporotic bone. So let's mention some causes of the pathological fractures. So uh, first, the metabolic bone disease and the most common cause of all pathological fractures is the osteoporosis. Uh, there is also another metabolic bone diseases that cause fractures which are the osteomalacia, the budget disease, the osteogenesis imperfecta and so on. There is also bone infection uh, in form of osteomyelitis that also lead to pathological fractures and bone tumors, benign and malignant, primary and secondary, example the osteosarcoma, lymphoma, myeloma, and so on. Primary bone tumors, both benign and malignant, most commonly occur in children and adults younger than 40, and secondary bone tumors in form of metastasis more common in patients older than 40 years of age. Most frequently carcinomas that metastasize to bone are the lung being number one and breast, thyroid, renal and prostate. And most common sites of metastasis are the spine, proximal femur and pelvis. Now let's talk about some clinical features of the pathological fractures and let's start with the history. So the history in pathological fractures are same as orthopedic trauma history that is explained in one of the previous videos in this class which is titled history taking and examination in orthopedic trauma uh, and but you need to pay attention to some details including the bone fractures spontaneously or after mild trauma in meaning in pathological fractures the bone fracture uh, sometimes spontaneously and sometimes after mild trauma so if your patient is present to you with mild trauma and they have a fracture you need to put the pathological fracture diagnosis uh, as a differential and the patient has a history of pain and swelling at the fracture site before the fracture occurs and you ask about the past medical history for previous previous illnesses and operations looking for previous diagnosis with the tumors regardless of how long it was history of malignant tumor may be the source of metastatic lesion patient present with weight loss pain lump cuff or hematuria in this context so if you suspect a tumor metastatic, metastatic lesion you the your patient would be would have those features and history of gastrectomy 
intestinal malabsorption, chronic alcoholism, or prolonged drug therapy should suggest metabolic bond disorder. And in younger patients, the history of previous fractures may suggest a diagnosis of osteogenesis imperfecta, even if the general, general features of the osteogenesis imperfecta are not uh, visible or not seen. Examination, it is the same as the orthopedic trauma examination explained uh, in the same video as the history, so history taking and examination orthopedic trauma in the same playlist. Uh, what you need to pay attention to some details. The general examination, you need to do a general examination to the patient, looking for characteristics, appearance for congenital dysplasias, Cushing syndrome, and Paget disease. And you examine the chest, neck, breasts, abdomen, prostate, and test for lymphadenopathy, looking for tumors in their sites. And the same orthopedic examination, uh, which is look, feel, and move. And you should also do a neurological examination with attention because in many cases the nerves are affected by the lesion. Uh, so you need to do it carefully. Now for the imaging, you start with the x-ray and you focus on those points while investigating an x-ray of a pathological fracture. So first you uh, pay attention to the type and location of the fracture in the body Example, vertebral compression fracture may be due to severe osteoporosis, metastasis, or myeloma. And you look for the location of the fracture on the bone. If, the, if it is a long bone, then diaphysis, metaphysis, or epiphysis. Where is the fracture exactly? Is it in the diaphysis, metaphysis, or epiphysis? So again, you need to look for the type and location of the fracture and you look for the location of the fracture on the bone. And if the pathological fracture is associated with a lesion, uh, then you focus on those points. You should look for the location of the, the lesion, if it is medullary, endosteal, cortical, or periosteal. And you look for the margin of the lesion. If it has a well-defined margin, then it is none aggressive pathology, mostly a benign pathology, and if it has an ill-defined margin, then it is mostly an aggressive pathology. So here we have the femur bone, and here we have the epiphysis, and then metaphysis, and then this part is diaphysis. So diaphysis, metaphysis, and epiphysis and same applies to this side and here we have this part here would be the, co the cortical and this part is medullary and this part here would be the industrial and this is the periosteal so the above part is periosteum and then the cortical comes and then the industrial, and then finally the medullary part of the bone. And same applies to this side too. So industrium, then cortical, then periosteal. And you look at the lesion matrix, and it could be a lytic lesion, a lytic matrix meaning in multiple myeloma and metastasis, and it could be a fibrous lesion which appears as a ground glass on x-ray and occurs in fibrous dysplasia and it could be a cumulus cloud in osteoid lesions and a popcorn in cartilaginous lesion and it could be a cell bubbly in cystic lesions. And you also look for the morphology of the lesion which could be circular, ovoid and so on. You look for the periosteal reaction to the lesion. It could be a smooth, benign periosteal reaction in benign lesions, and it could be limulated in moderately growing lesions, could be hair on end in fast growing lesions, and could be code man triangles in rapid rate of growth of a lesion. And you finally look for extra osseous 
or soft tissue involvement for the lesion. So here we have an X-ray examples of some pathological fractures. So in the left picture here, we can see a, patho a pathological fracture right here in the proximal in the proximal phalanx of the index finger, and it is also associated with a medullary lesion, as we can see here. It has well-defined margins, and it also has cortical thinning. The cortex here is thinned down, and also in here. And uh, this is all, and it has some calcifications here. And th those all are characteristics of in inchondroma, which is a benign lesion of the uh, index finger. The right picture here, we have a pathological fracture right here in the proximal uh, humerus and uh, we, we can see also an associated lesion, cystic lesion that has a well-defined margins as we can see here. So though this is the lesion and it has well-defined margins. It's also associated with cortical thinning and we have some bone fragments here in the lesion and this is all uh, characteristic of uh, a juvenile bone cyst or a simple bone cyst which is a benign lesion of the uh, proximal humerus. So here we have an example of uh, a femoral shaft fracture as we can see right here and this is the timeline for it. So this is the first x-ray here and then we have the second one and the third one which is associated with a fracture. So on the first one, we can see that there is the cortical density here on this side. Uh, as we can see, uh, it is much more than the left side. The left side is, is almost uh, obliterated and we can see a medullary lesion with the ill-defined margins here. Uh, and we, on, the, on the second picture, we can see that uh, the cortex is even uh, worse here. It is more it is uh, less defined here and finally it led to a fracture and this person has a breast cancer uh, which end up metastasizing to the uh, femur causing a lytic bone lesion so this is a lytic bone lesion uh, and led to a fracture pathological fracture other investigations include radio radiological investigations like ct scans bone scans MRI, uh, all of them, you should, you should use them to look for tumors and labs looking for metabolic bone diseases, CBC, ESR, vitamin D, calcium, uh, serum protein electrophoresis, and so on, and tumor related tests. Biopsy, if the disorder is not diagnosed by previous tests. Finally, the treatment of pathological fractures. So it is the same treatment principles explained in the management of fractures videos, which is available in the same playlist. So reduce, hold, and exercise, and with the treatment of the underlying pathology, cause the fracture to occur. Internal fixation is advised as a holding method for most of the cases to prevent refracturing and in cases when the bone healing is impaired. And internal fixation method used should be strong enough to bear the weight of the patient because the bone healing might be impaired too and the pathological fracture near bone end can be treated with excision and arthrop arthroplasty especially with hip fractures and with that we reach the end of this video thank you guys for watching please make sure to like and subscribe and if you want to support more, you can by subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Peace.